In this video, I'll be working through the questions you see on the screen. And this question is from the winter edition of Cambridge International Exams from 2023 from paper 1-2. If you want any other questions from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. I do these on a whiteboard, hopefully to mimic how you're used to watching your teacher teach these questions. And if you find any of this useful in any way, please like, subscribe, and even share it with some friend that's doing the exams or someone doing it next year. In question 11, the last question in this paper, they give us three points, uh, A, B, and C, with one number missing, P here in uh, point B. And they, oh, they give us a clue about P, they say it's less than 10. They also tell us that the line AB, the line between these two points is perpendicular to the line between B and C. With all those clues, they ask you to find the value of P. So how do we do that? Uh, perpendicular is the important thing here. Uh, we know some things about perpendicular. We know the slope. We know how it changes with another slope. So if we find the slope of AB, and uh, we have a slope formula, so M of AB, it's, the slope formula is y2 minus y1, the y's, take the y's away from each other, the rise. So that's seven minus four, that's three, uh, divided by x2 minus x1, or the run, the, the length, think of it as a triangle. The height by the, the, the rise by the run, that's what we call it. Um, so the y's we did seven minus four, so then we'll do p minus six. And that's the slope of AB. Now the slope of BC, the other thing we're interested in, very similar, is 18 minus seven, that's 11, over 14 minus P. Now, we know that um, these are perpendicular. So usually we just flip them upside down and change the sign, which will work. Uh, flip this upside down, change the sign, and put it equal to that, and just solve it. And uh, the other way, the more proper way to say it is, is that these two slopes multiplied uh, by each other. 11 divided by 14 minus p. When we multiply these by each other, we get minus one. You often see that definition. I'll just use it here. Um, but really, it would be the same as what I just said. Flip one num, change the sign, put them equal to each other. Okay, so let's uh, solve that. Let's um, bottom rows multiply each other, but let's multiply them over here. Yeah, let's do this all in one, actually. Top by top is, uh, 33, that equals, uh, let's the bottom by the bottom. We get P times minus P, that's minus P squared. Multiply it over here, we get plus P squared. Uh, let's all the P's, we get 14P uh, minus by minus, we get 6P, 14P plus 6P is 20P. Multiply by that minus, it's minus 20P. And um, six by 14 is uh, 60 plus 24, 84. Minus 84, that becomes plus 84. Let's clean this up. We get p squared minus 20p. Uh, take that away, we get 51 uh, plus 51 uh, p here. All that equals a zero. Just checking that's right. Yeah, it looks right to me. Um, we want to solve for p. We have a quadratic. Let's hope it uh, solves uh, neatly. Let's put two brackets here. Uh, p times p gets p squared. Uh, we're looking for two numbers to multiply to get 51. Just ch checking a calculator, divide by uh, one, no point, it wouldn't be anywhere close to 20. Two doesn't go in, three. Uh, three does go in uh, 17 times, and that is the one we're probably looking for. Three and 17 would get to 20 quite nicely. So let's try three and 17. Want to get to minus 20. So we'd have to have minus three by minus 17, we'll get to minus 20, and then three, minus three by minus 17, it does get plus, this works. So P is equal to three, or P is equal to 17. Remember, the one other extra clue they gave us, P is less than 10. Just, just put a line through that one then. Tell the examiner you know that's not correct. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the answer to part A. Uh, part B is very tricky. It's, in fact, I think it's too hard for three marks they're giving you. There is uh, two main ways to do this uh, question, but there is a trick that if you know the trick, it becomes a lot easier, and that's why it's only three marks. But if you don't know the trick, 
the two ways I see to do it are, are complicated. They're, they're probably worth five, maybe six marks. So it's a little mean. Anyway, the question, it tells you that a circle passes through these three points. I've replaced the, the P with a three. And um, find the equation of that circle. Now, let's, let's say two ways to do that first, before I tell you the trick that makes it easier. Uh, first way would be, we have a circle with three points on it, and we know that the chords, the bisect the chord, the midpoint of these points, perpendicular line, the midpoint of this perpendicular, hits the center. And this is very doable. All we'd have to do is find the midpoint of two of them, and find the slope, and therefore the slope of the perpendicular, equation of that line. Do the same here, equation of that line. Boom, we find the center. Uh, oh sorry, they asked to find the equation of the circle. So obviously we need the center, and we need the radius. So the center, if, once we get the center, we'll find it all out. Distance from the center to a point. Um, will give us that. So this would be the main way to do it, and if a student did this, they would have got the right answer. They wouldn't have seen anything wrong, except it probably would have taken them an extra three or four minutes that they shouldn't have had to use. That's a five mark question, four minimum. But there's only three marks. Another way to do it, probably even harder, would be to use the general equation of a circle. Um, so x minus h, the, the center here, squared, plus y minus k, the other part of the center is equal to r squared. Three, well, five unknowns. But we have three pieces of information. I could put x and y in uh, here, and I'd be left with an equation with three unknowns. I could put this x and y in, left with an equation with three unknowns. This x and y, another equation with three unknowns. That'd be a simultaneous equation with three unknowns, which is a big mess of a question. That's probably worth six points if you did it that way. But again, you would get the right answer. You'd find the center, or sorry, you'd just find the equation in this case. Wouldn't you? You'd, you'd be able to tell the center by those two points, but you'd just find the equation. Um, there are the two main ways to do it. So what's the trick? What got this down to three marks? Uh, the trick was to notice what they said at the start. The, the line AB, the line AB, let's say if this was AB, is perpendicular to the line BC. BC, it's not in this picture. So let's draw it again with that. Uh, a line, uh, let's say A and B, and uh, perpendicular. So, sorry, a right angle here, and that's C down here. Put the, and then put this on a circle. It's still not obvious. I don't think a student should obviously go, oh yeah, of course, now I know. Uh, but. If you were to get a ruler and a compass and try hard here to draw this circle, you'd find that the center is the middle of AC. And uh, that should be obvious why when you remember that a right angle and a circle, how they go together. The right angle um, appears in a semicircle, in a half circle. So when you knew this was a right angle, you should be able to know that this was a um, diameter. That AC, uh, I think it is AC, yeah, AC is a diameter. With that information, I could find this center. Remember A is just six, four, C is 14, 18. So the center is halfway between them. Halfway between six and 14 is 10. Halfway between 18 and four, 18 plus 4, 22, divided by 2 is 11. So we know the center of this circle. Uh, we can then find the distance to C or A, whichever you want. Uh, let's find the distance to A. So the distance from 11 to 4, that's 11 minus 4, and we square that. Uh, the distance from 10 to 6, 10 minus 6, and we square that. Add them together and get the square root. We're getting Pythagoras theorem. We're just getting Pythagoras theorem, uh, the distance formula. And that becomes uh, seven squared is 49. Four squared is 16. Uh, add these together, we get square root of 65. Nearly a square, 64 is a square. Not 65 though. And that's or, that's the radius is equal to or. They, they asked for the equation of this. We could fill everything in. Uh, the equation of this is x minus 10. 
uh, squared plus y minus 11 squared equals or squared, uh, which is 65. That's the answer. It's, it was as short as that. Three marks. If you knew the trick, it would have been like it was only worth one or two marks, really. But you got you got one or two marks for the trick and one or two for the working. And um, so apologies if you did do it a really long way uh, and get the same answer. You're not getting any extra marks. I, I guess, you know, what? I said that it was wrong, this question, to do it that way. But you know what? It rewarded students for knowing that trick, for knowing that the right angle. That's probably OK. OK, let me clean some of this off and we do part C. OK, part C and the very last thing in this whole paper is uh, find the equation of the tangent to the circle at C. So there's a tangent here at C. And um, put your answer in the form of dx plus ey plus f equals zero. We'll, we'll sort that out later. D, E and F has to be an integer. So we'll have a nice neat answer. Uh, so basically find the equation of this line. Find the equation of the tangent at C. Very common, we're gonna be asked this all the time. We have a point, uh, 40 and 18. We just need a slope. So what's the slope of this? It's perpendicular to the slope of AC. So let's find the slope of AC. M of uh, AC is equal to 18 minus 4 is 14. 14 minus 6 is 8. Or uh, divide 2 into both M, 7 over 4. That's the slope of this line here. So what's the slope of this one? Uh, the slope of the, the tangent, I'll just write M in future though, is equal to minus 4 over 7. Boom, we have the slope, we have the point. You're gonna be asked to do this at least twice every exam. Well, every uh, paper one exam. Uh, so you need to know how to do it. I find the easiest way is just to write the equation of a line. Y is equal to M, we know M, four over seven, X plus C. I don't know C. So let's find C. That's where knowing the point comes in. Uh, put the point in, uh, Y is 18 is equal to minus 4 over 7, x is 14, plus c. 7 very nicely goes into 14. Thank you for that examiner. 2 times, 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Add minus 8 to both sides, we get 26 equals c. So let's just, one, just write this line one more time with the information we now know. Uh, the answer is y is equal, oh sorry, not the full answer. Let me. Uh, let me make a little more room than that. I forgot the extra stipulation. Y is equal minus four over seven X plus 26. You will lose one mark for that. They did ask you to have the answer in the form of something X, something Y, something equals zero. Uh, so let's get everybody over the same side. We'll turn X into a positive. Put everything over that side. We'll do four over seven X plus Y uh, minus 26 equals zero. That's what they asked for, something x, something y, something. Except they told us, you're still gonna lose a mark. They told us they have to be integers. So they don't care if it's a minus. Minus 26 is fine, or whatever it's gonna turn out to be. But they do care about fractions. Uh, multiply everybody by seven, we'll get rid of that. Four x uh, plus seven y is equal to um, 140 plus 42, is, I'm oh sorry, not equals, minus uh, 182, I believe. Let me just check my notes there for a moment. Yeah, that's right, uh, minus 182. So 4x plus 7y minus 182 fits how, how they asked. Uh, one last thing to say, a lot of students panic when there's a minus here. They, they ask for a plus. Remember, <laughs> this is just plus minus 180. Two, they like that's going to happen all the time in exams. Don't get panicked for that. You're fine to you don't have to write this either. You're fine to write minus uh, minus one hundred and eighty-two. Um, okay, that answers question eleven. If you have any questions, anything in this paper or anything in this question or this entire paper, let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.